Hello. <clears throat> well, today I wanted to talk to uh, about a film that uh, it's another one that's turned fifty years old. Um, but this is a uh, from a filmmaker who uh, is very well known and well respected, and for many good reasons. Um, this is like one of the uh, well, this is absolutely one of his early films. Um, it's uh, one of the ones that really started to. Uh, get him quite a bit of attention even though at the box office it wasn't a huge fire starter compared to like say his com contemporaries like uh, george lucas whose film it also came out the same year of 1973 uh american graffiti was um but still it's a very very good film all the same and deserves all the acclaim that it has received i think and uh that movie being Mean Streets. Um, so here is the original Blu-ray. Um, as well as the Criterion 4K Blu-ray. Which this has both the special features that was on this. Which was a commentary by uh, 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 Martin Scorsese and A.B. Robinson, as well as a vintage featurette uh, back on the block. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to absolutely keep this and um, probably give this to a family member of mine. But, yeah, um, this entire movie is essentially a semi-autobiographical film, as Scorsese says it's essentially like a, what he could have been like if uh, his life went another way. Like in a way, like this film parallels to some extent how, like during the week, he would be like one person. You know, you'd be going to college, but then all the weekends he'd be hanging out with like these guys who, you know, would get into trouble. And also, um, there were. Um, <clears throat> Definitely some, uh, uh, there was, uh, some, uh, different, um, uh, yeah, there was definitely some, uh, uh, violent stuff going on, including how at the very end, uh, what Scorsese has said, including this, uh, conversation with Richard Linklater, how um, I guess some friends of his were, got shot at, or were shot, because of some guys. And now he wasn't actually there because he got out of the car that eventually got shot at. Um, he and a friend of his, or like in the back or whatever, were just wanted to get out. They didn't want to keep going anymore and just go somewhere else. So they did that, and then around the block, all of a sudden, some other car came up, and then shot at who was in the car um and how that absolutely does uh, uh have a parallel to what is at the very end of this film i don't want to exactly spoil it but um it does invo involve martin scorsese you know he was at he absolutely had a cameo in this film he's there at the end a few scenes um but uh as the Back here, says, you know, uh, Martin Scorsese emerged as a generation-defining filmmaker with this gritty portrait of 1970s New York, one of the most influential works in American independent cinema. Sit in the insular Little Italy neighborhood of Scorsese's youth, Main Streets follows Gil-written small-time uh, ringleader Charlie, played by Harvey Keitel, as he deals with the Debts owed by his dangerously volatile best friend Johnny Boy, led by Robert De Niro, and uh, pressure from his headstrong girlfriend Teresa. As their intertwining lives spiral out of control, Scorsese showcases his uh, precious mastery of film, star uh, film style, evident from everything from the uh, propulsive editing rhythms to the loving uh, curated soundtrack to an electrifying version of Sin and Redemption. And that is a very good, accurate uh, uh, summarization, essentially, of this film. Um, 
uh, one of the things is that, uh, you know, uh, Johnny Boy is, is played by Robert De Niro. And there's Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel was his original leading man. But then once this film happened, you know, obviously De Niro was a supporting character. But the very next time they worked together was Taxi Driver. And, of course, he was the lead. And so from then on, when you saw uh, De Niro really prominently, he was uh, basically the lead. From Taxi Driver all the way until... The Irishman for their collaborations. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon, he is the supporting uh, character. So, um, you know, in a way it's like back to this <laughs> kind of role, but absolutely effective, though it de definitely makes sense why he's a supporting uh, character in Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, but in this film, he, he, he absolutely steals the whole film. He's just uh, amazing. And then... Um, uh, uh, Harvey Keitel does an excellent job. He, you know, he always does a, a solid job. You know, you could say some of the films he's chosen as his career went on and got bigger uh, and bigger. <clears throat> you know, he chose some parts that, you know, probably wasn't the best, which, you know, that happens to a lot of actors and actresses. They choose parts which seemed to be maybe at the time a good choice for them um sometimes it also money might also come into the equation but usually people try to do the best of the stuff that will help their career um though sometimes that doesn't always pan out um but you know uh johnny boy he owes money to so many people, in particular, a guy named uh, Michael, and uh, you know he's uh, somebody who has uh, some serious, uh, uh, you know, he's uh, somebody who he wants the money back that he's owed him. You know, he, he owes him so much money that gets to a point where they have to sort of compromise to how from how much he owes to how much. He, like how much he actually owes to how much that is like funny take, like take a thousand dollars off we'll just do that and, uh, and yeah the the way everything turns out and transpires is just so uh, uh, fantastic and just and even frightening you know honestly um Teresa is also uh, uh, Johnny's cousin, and uh, obviously uh, Charlie is dating her, but that's also like their relationship is a secret. Um, and, um, you know, and on the cover of this, it says, go to church on Sunday, go to hell on Monday. That's also a very good summarization of this film, you know. Uh, Charlie, in a way, is sort of trapped between these two worlds. You know, he wants to be a devout Catholic and also do what is right and and tries to do what's right and tries to set things right. But also, because of the world he's hanging out in, like a friend Tony, who like owns a bar, you know, and a lot of stuff goes on there. And some of the people hang, he hangs out with aren't always the greatest people to you know, associate yourself with, and uh, especially if you're trying to be a good Christian, uh, Catholic in particular, but yeah, it's like, this is just a, this is a fantastic film, um, open up and uh, show you this, um, the Blu-ray was on top, because after I watched the film, I put the blu-ray in for all the special features but there is the blu-ray the white background with a red c and then a red background with a white c for you know criterion and then uh yeah there's nothing there but uh over here there is something. Oh. 
Which is a candle. And throughout the film, you know, he, uh, Charlie often uh, goes to sort of like put his finger over the flame of a, of a candle or a light and just tries to, he always like, like recoils from pain, although it, as, ta as the film goes on, he shows, he does what he can to like essentially uh, tries to uh, endure the pain so he doesn't have to just take his finger away as soon as he does and just like in a way it's like he's trying to not like he doesn't want to go to hell and also it's like with how he's essentially who he's hanging around with and everything that's going on he might be like I might be going to hell so in a way I might, I might have to get used to this in this life because you know it's gonna really suck in the next oh boy even though it's a uh, cartoon and all that, and a caricature. Yeah. And here's a... The back, and there's the... There's Johnny Boy, and there's... Uh, Charlie, and, and the Rosary. Um, and the Carradine brothers are in this... Uh, in a scene at the bar, you get to see... Uh, uh, David Carradine, and... Uh, Robert Carradine, and, uh, Robert, <laughs> yeah, David Carradine, drunk, Robert Carradine, boy with gun, and, yeah, and there's also, uh, his mother, uh, woman on landing, Catherine Scorsese, and she also is there at the very end who pulls down a blinds, and Jimmy Short, Spartan Scorsese, um, and, uh, credits, um, David Pravo plays Tony, Amy Robinson's Teresa, who she became a producer and uh, actually produced uh, After Hours for, for Scorsese. Um, Richard Ramones is, uh, plays Michael uh, Giovanni. Uh, uh, Charlie's uncle, who is a, a most definite mob guy. On the off chance, for some reason, if people weren't sure if there's any official mob affiliations with some of these characters. Giovanni, you know, absolutely is. And uh, yeah, this is a this is a fantastic film. It's just an amazing movie. Um, a story by Martin Scorsese, screenplay by Martin Scorsese and Martin Martin. You know, uh, Scorsese doesn't really write many of his films, but uh, this was one that he did write. And, um, yeah, he wrote also uh, Goodfellas, I know, and he also wrote uh, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, and also here, I guess I'll show you the disc. Yeah, there you go. Uh, black background. Oh, and, and, you know, uh, normal disc, <laughs> uh, essentially the mirror of the disc, uh, as the words. Yeah, it's, you know, Warner Brothers has some good, uh, cover art for their discs yet sometimes or the disc art i guess i should say that makes more sense but sometimes some of their stuff like this if this release was uh 2012 yeah right. obviously it isn't the greatest no you can't say obviously like well well you know this isn't the most phenomenal either with the c's you know, 4k blu-ray disc is white sea with a red background with the uh, uh, white background and red sea for the just normal blu-ray disc and yeah you could say that's uh, the case but in some cases though with criterion you kind of just get that you know there's always the sea uh, primarily with the blu-rays and such at least until they uh which i think this is going to be their permanent logo <laughs> 
I don't see them ever changing it back to any of the other logos or changing it in the future. But yeah, the disc art may not be the, sometimes may not be the absolute best, but you know, at least there's more colors than just one solid background with the, the title just being there and the, yeah, like they just had a blank disc for it. And then they just put that over it, and it's just like the one color with the words being there. It's just more effort, obviously, is put into a discard for something like Criterion, you know. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate that that happens with companies. I think, though, uh, Paramount will probably be the uh, worst offender, though, with uh, disc artwork. Yeah, it's always like solid blue for, you know, Blu-ray discs. It's like, yeah, all right. I guess solid gray, you know, obviously for uh, DVDs. And, but, yeah. Anyway, you know, this film is really good. Um, it may be on the Criterion channel. I do not know um, offhand. But uh, this film is... Uh, 112 minutes, so, you know, two hours, uh, or two hours, one hour and 52 minutes. I, I'm all right. I'm too, for some reason, I wanted to put eight more minutes in this film, which there isn't. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot of extras here on here, too. It's really cool. The, uh, yeah very good and there's obviously in that little long thing was a uh, uh, an essay from the insert here but uh yeah which i did show but yeah yeah excellent film um you know this may not have been the a uh, huge uh, box of draw. I mean, it did make money where it went. It just, you know, because it wasn't made, it was made for under a thousand or a million dollars. It was made under a million dollars, but he was able to, and it did make a number of millions. But of course, you know, with how uh, certain companies like Warner Brothers, you know, they would have liked to have obviously made no doubt more money back, especially with some of the, uh, word of mouth so in the eyes of Warner Brothers it didn't really make a whole lot of you know it didn't set things on fire like say their films like The Exorcist which that was a part of the problem with this film's success was it came out around the same time as The Exorcist <clears throat> so if uh, Warner Brothers at least maybe put this out a little earlier perhaps then you know uh, mean Streets would have been more of a financial success for them, at least in their eyes, but, yeah. Very good film. I enjoy this. It's a, a well-made and well-acted and written. And it's really cool to see the beginning of uh, Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro's uh, uh, partnership, uh, collaborations, you know, which... From this movie to uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, they've done 10 films. Um, my favorite film has, is Taxi Driver, as I've already talked about my fondness for that film quite a bit. So um, it probably won't be until I, it's 50 years old that I'll talk about that film and how much I love it again. But yeah. So I love them in this film love their work Harvey Keitel does an excellent job too um but yeah excellent film uh that's all I have to say There's really nothing more uh, to it so uh have you seen this film if so what do you think do you enjoy it do you dislike it um why or why not um, and there is nudity in this film, but uh, 
it's not like Wolf of Wall Street. So if you're somebody who wasn't fond of the well, the sex or nudity of that film, well, there is some definite uh, nudity and stuff, but you know, it's not like as overtly graphic like say Wolf of Wall Street. Um, that this world is not. If you were to say it's insane, it's insane in the sense of like how intense and uh, volatile everything is, and now there's a big breaking point with like violence. Um, which I'm sure, you know, with Scorsese, that's not going to really surprise anybody. But if anything, that should be at least uh, said for anybody who has not seen this film and might be curious to see some of uh, Scorsese's early work and um, perhaps even Robert De Niro's early work and Harvey Keitel's early work. And yeah, the culmination of all of them working together for the first time <clears throat> in this film. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to highlight my fondness for this film. Um, I've loved this film ever since I saw it way back uh, so many years ago. I don't, I don't remember when the first time I actually saw this. Uh, obviously, I was, I, yeah, I was a teenager for sure. When that, you know, the age. I know. Obviously, I was eighteen when I got the Blu-ray because I turned eighteen in two thousand twelve. So I got that. I actually owned it then, obviously, for the first time, but I know I've seen it before, so. Uh, though Taxi Driver was the first uh, time I ever saw a Scorsese film, um, I think, ever. Maybe I saw some uh, moments here or there a, little, a few years prior, but that was the first film I ever saw from beginning to end. Um, like all the you know all the all the way through when I was thirteen, so you know, I think it was like a year or two after I saw Mean Streets, but you know <clears throat> I enjoyed it ever since I first saw it, and uh, yeah, and the, and the soundtrack is also fantastic, you know. But you know what do you expect? You know, Scorsese always seems to have good music in his movies. Um, so yeah, comment below if you've seen this film, what you think about it. And uh, yeah, I don't believe I gave too many spoilers. I know for a while I probably bit, I bit went on a bit of a <laughs> tangent on disc art, but you know, that might be a very minute thing to even talk about. But you know, these days, it's it, I don't know, I think... Uh, <clears throat> In a way, it's like the cover of a movie or a poster. You know, it it could be nice. It's just nice to look at and could be very appealing, and perhaps even draw you in more. Especially if it's a film you haven't seen before. You know, you know, even if it's just like from a certain still frame of a film, like if it's a very perhaps like it would see, be seen as an iconic shot of a sort. You know, that'd be fine. <clears throat> I don't think anybody would mind. Uh, that, like, Zach, you know, for, like, Star Wars, like, the original Star Wars, A New Hope, if, like, one of the discs was the famous uh, shot of uh, Luke uh, looking out at the twin sons, that's an iconic shot, and that would be perfectly, you know, uh, would make absolute sense to have that for discard um, for Star Wars, you know, yeah. Anyway, I'm about to... I'm pretty much rambling at this point, but, you know, I hope... hope that made sense, and if it didn't, I completely apologize. But, yeah. What do you think about this film? Like it? Dislike it? Why or why not? Uh, let me know, as well as others, uh, in the comments, if you want. You don't have to say anything, obviously, if you'd rather not, but... Regardless, you can say what you want. Um, and, you know, God willing, I'll be able to see it. And hopefully YouTube doesn't, you know, block out some people's comments. Because that does happen sometimes, unfortunately. Which, even if you don't write anything in particularly offensive or anything, I've had to uncover some people's uh, comments before. But let me know what you think. And, uh... If that ever does become a problem, which it hasn't, thankfully, in the 
the last so many months, but, you know, if that does ever come up, I will absolutely uh, <laughs> make it so everyone can see your comment. But, yeah, I just, uh, I enjoy this film and wanted to sort of, like, express my fondness for it. So, uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me and others know what you think. And, uh, yeah. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. And I'll take, uh, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.